welcome to the Rebel Podcast. And in this podcast, we are talking about how can you and me and the wider community become more rebel. So rebel stands for someone who is resilient, who has empathy for self and others, who's willing to break those rules, all those limiting mindsets, and obviously how to evolve. But most importantly, never ever forget to lighten up. So this movement is created to try and um, make trauma and mental health and suicide and addiction less of a stigma and more of a topic that we can openly talk about by sharing our own rebel stories of how we transform our trauma into happily ever after. So all you have to do is just share your favorite rebel story of one of those five items or frameworks um, of how you identified with being resilient or empathetic, etc. And then tag a friend or a, a, a colleague and use the hashtag, hashtag 1 million rebels by 2030. And hopefully we can together transform trauma into happily ever after. So thank you so much, Caroline Giorgio. I'm so, so excited to have this conversation with you today. You are an incredible inspiration and such a trailblazer in this industry and in this space. So I couldn't think of anyone who would be better suited for, for this podcast than you. So I'm just going to give the, the, the listeners a quick little overview of what this amazing woman is. Um, you're an inner dance facilitator and trainer, a somatic movement and trauma specialist. Now, this is what, a two, four, five, six, six words that we condensed of a woman who's had a CV of four pages long and starting the journey since, what, 2008? No, but longer? I think 1978, perhaps, like the moment I was born, maybe. <laughs> but I think that's true for everybody. I like that. I like that. So please give us a little overview of jo Caroline. Who are you? Why did you enter this space? And just who are you? What excites you? Okay. I I'm still discovering that. So it might be quite a nonlinear way of answering. But Okay, that's fine. I, I knew very early on that I could um, read people and um, know things that were unsaid and sort of the invisible realms, but I didn't have a language for it and it wasn't, it wasn't in my family culture to talk about things like that, to be sort of highly attuned. So I just head down, just get on with things as you do, losing my sort of creativity and imagination along the way. And I met a tutor um, when I was about 17 on a course who was a counsellor and she recognised something in me and she encouraged me to read some counselling books and um, everything changed. It was like light filled my body and all of a sudden I was in complete resonance with the frequency of the words I was reading and so from that moment I understood this language and that, that was my pursuit that was my purpose so I, I spent most of my life um, dedicated to counselling I had to wait a long time because back in those days they had age restrictions and there were very few courses available so I, I moved to America and I, I got some experience in training there and then came back to Scotland, trained as a counsellor. And that was my life's focus for a very long time. I didn't understand that I was working in embodied ways, that my empathy was a fully embodied experience. Until I moved down to England and I, I read The Body Keeps the Score about 10 years ago or so. And again, it was like a veil lifted and I began to see myself and the behaviours and adaptations that I had adopted for survival very clearly. And something, again, woke up inside of me and I understood that the healing cannot be without the body. We cannot, it, without connection, the whole body connection then we are living a half-life and half-truths. So like for the last 10 years, I've been in pursuit of um, reclaiming the body's wisdom and supporting others to befriend their bodies once again and to come home to themselves, mm. which led me to inner dance and all the phenomenally powerful energy work that I do now. So 
Tell me more about inner dance. What is what is it that attracts you about it? And what do you think is the benefits for 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 people? Uh, is it just for people struggling with trauma, or is it just for anybody? It's for everybody. So inner dance, in a very condensed way, is um, working with sound and energy to entrain ourselves back into an altered state of consciousness between waking and dreaming, because it's in that state that we self heal. You know, so the so it's essentially the ancient practice of conscious dreaming supported by sound and touch. And my very first experience, um, I saw the divine feminine as a, as a goddess, and she was beckoning me towards her. And I understood that I was being initiated into something very powerful. Yeah. So that I, that was me. I'm, as you can tell. for someone who perhaps have never heard these kind of words. What does that mean? Okay. Well, there's many ways that you could interpret that. Um, so essentially, you're working with sound waves that stimulate our neurobiology to vibrate and oscillate at the same waves and frequencies that happen when we're in the dream state, which supports a flow and return of energy movement and electricity through the body. You know, so because of our experiences, we tend to contract and shut down and squeeze. And so we, we lose our capacity for flow. And through through the mechanism of sound, that can re-stimulate the body's self-healing capacity. And when electricity flows and spreads through the brain, the body, we start to waken up to a much fuller potential. You know, we only use just a tiny percentage of our full potential, but this increases that. So we can have visions, we can have sensations, we repattern our nervous system. So all those old stories begin to transform and transmute. You know, because when it, when it comes to trauma, for so many of us, we get stuck. Mm -hmm. And we repeat the story over and over again. And this is about finding freedom. And the body's an innate way of doing that. Okay. So it's it's for anyone and everyone. You know, we it's our birthright. We were born with these capacities to self heal. But for me, a little bit more about that because that's obviously um, coming up a lot more, and people don't understand that they actually get angry when when I speak about it. They're like, no, 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 we can't. I need I need my medication. So would you like to talk a little bit more around that? Sure. Well, let me feel into that. Our stories are really important to us. It's as humans, we need them. There's something so important about them because they, they, they capture essence and they're vibratory. And we become identified with them in our search for identity. We become identified with a story. And then just like a broken record, we just repeat it over and over and over. And so anything that maybe vibrates or sounds a little bit different can stimulate our nervous system. We get a bit edgy and agitated. We need to defend ourselves. And usually where there's a lot of charge, that's usually where we need to go and maybe re-explore what's going on there. But, you know, for many people, that's the way, you know, that they... they, they they feel that medication is the support and the scaffolding, that there are certain things that they need to do. But there's something for me that I discovered through my own trauma wounding was it, it narrowed my world view. I, my world became very, very small and I lost the color. It was so black and white. I think we become very polarized. Mm -hmm. you know, it was black and white, either or, you know, it, rather than it's unity and everything is possible altogether. Yes. Yes. And, and and so we defend those stories of polarity because we're afraid of losing our identity it's it's a grief it's a loss and it's something that we can hold on to you know for so many of us in our grief we we grip we hold on really really tight for for our lives mm -hmm. yeah. and what would you say to someone listening in and who has an identity and they would like to loosen their grip what would you suggest they do be really kind with yourself, really kind, because to unfreeze and unstick, that has to, it needs to come from a, a warm heart. It's the warm heart that defrosts us, and our true nature is to vibrate at a very high frequency. 
So trust your pace and begin to listen to yourself. The, the yeah. voice that kindly suggests things that might be beyond your comfort zone. Mm. And, um, begin to discover who you really are because who you think you are, they're not the same. Yeah. Yes, I like that. Do you perhaps have a favourite rebel story that you would like to share? Well, my whole life's been a rebellious act. I feel. Um, I got my partner, my nickname is Teeny, and he calls me Teeny Rebel. Oh, so, I like that. <laughs> I guess I understood from a very young age that I wasn't born to be obedient and that pursuing my truth above all else was what I was put on this earth in this time space to do which can mean you can be perceived as a rebel and um, bad, dangerous, nasty, you know, they're witch. There are many names that um, women in particular have been, have been called. So I guess that doesn't give any specific, it feels like it's, it's a practice. It, it's not, there are a billion stories within it, but for it's it's a way of being and it's a practice. Yes. And it's something I'm doing every day. Yeah. So it I like that because that I think that is quite important to 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 stress to to the listeners. It's not an overnight right, I've got it. I'm gonna start being more rebel, I'm gonna be more resilient, I'm gonna have more empathy, I'm gonna start breaking rules, have evolving, lighten up. And then once you've done it, it's done. <laughs> Then yeah. the fun really starts. <laughs> yeah. So it's that evolution, that constant evolution and change. And um, yeah. what what would you advise people who go through this um, ebb and flow of life? Well, I think that that is the movement of life. It is ebb and it is flow. So I live by the river. So I have a beautiful witness and, and guide who shows me that there's always rhythm there's there's a sacred geometry and the ebb and flow is really really important that we need the balance between rest and activity we can't only ever be in one yes. we need to move and the movement is is life yes and and what do you do you think that's perhaps one of the challenges as well that we um i i've got the a, a somatic trauma informed program and I talk about, you know, letting go and that movement, even just stretching and yawning, it's taboo in society. When I when I stretch myself in public, people stare at me. Yeah. Like, but it's the most natural thing for us to do is just to oh, breathe, yeah. let go. But no, that's bad manners. You must you mustn't do that. You must just sit, sit still, be like this. <laughs> be this perfect little example can you expand a little bit on that caroline yeah there are so many rules things projected onto and imposed upon the most basic and innate ways of taking care of ourselves you know not only is the yawn one of the most pleasurable experiences i think you can have it's actually the the body resetting itself so it's the autonomic nervous system seeking expansion and then coming inward and then back out again mm -hmm. so it, it's it's regulatory so there's there's such authentic intelligence within the body's way of, of being through movement and expression. And we've really been taught not to trust our bodies anymore for, for fear of being shamed and socially unacceptable. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm the one that during lockdown and the Zoom meetings would be yawning and getting up and moving around. And, you know, I know that there are some people who wish they could join in. <laughs> So, so how do you I encourage them. How do you encourage them to do that? To be more authentic and move, follow your heart, follow your body, trust. How do you do that? Because it's hard, right? Once you've been indoctrined and been lived by these rules of this is how you behave and this is what will happen if you don't behave, you'll get punished. Yes, it's indoctrined. So, how do you loosen that up? Well. Curiosity, and I know that's one of the first things to go. And I, Bessel van der Kolk, he spoke about we lose our curious neck, and he he recognised when healing was beginning because people would go from this sort of really contracted neck, and they would start to look up and start to look around again. Mm -hmm. So anything that can evoke and encourage your curiosity, you know, even just 
the curiosity about like the color of your carpet and the texture of it, but start to go beyond your assumptions. Mm. So it doesn't have to be anything massive, mm. you know, because, you know, we, we have, we put the brakes on for a reason. There's something gently, gently starting to be the curious observer. Mm. And I like to say to people, you know, imagine you're an archaeologist, mm. you know, and you've got this really gentle brush and you're combing through each grain of sand with no judgment about good and bad it's not hierarchical but there is a treasure waiting to be discovered mm. if you can just gently curiously stay with that yes now that goes to the next question of the impatient one i'm not impatient at all <laughs> <Good time. laughs> so people like myself who are impatient with one thing is done now yeah. it's really hard to just with a brush i want to break it open <laughs> <laughs> let's break it open and see what's inside <laughs> now yeah. this in brush. so how how would you how would you uh guide guide people like us who are impatient yeah uh, now i'm not saying this is true for everyone but i know for some people there's something about the discomfort um an avoidance of a particular sensation that we want to just get there immediately we don't like that moving through slowing down and and that can also be a nervous system activation that slowing down can signal to the body threat and danger so again there's something about staying curious to that you know if i need to, if there's energy that re requires discharge well maybe i need to do that maybe I, I need to just take five minutes to put some music on if that feels okay and just let the body move itself yeah you know, oh, the, I love there, that. There's a million and one ways to to support yourself. It's just again, there's even the story of I'm an impatient person. Yeah, that might not be the full picture. No, no, no. I've 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 adapted so much. I've I've learned to do that. Sit with it, but oh, it's painful. It's it's not comfortable because I I do recognize that you know I'm I'm. I'm a I'm a trauma baby, you know. I'm I'm constantly on the yeah. What's next? Where's my Where's my next? And I have to remind myself. Yeah, and you know we yeah. can do both okay. at the same time because I really love to create, and I all I I always have something wanting to come through me, yeah. and I'm also I've learned how to be really good at taking my time. So I it's I, can I be with those contradictory energies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fire it up so that I can, you know, for, for me, my, my anger and this energy has always been my lifeline. You know, that was what kept me alive. Yes. But I don't need it anymore. I'm not, I don't need that. So it's a constant reminder. That's what I love when you said constant because it's constant. <laughs> constant remind yourself there's no danger. Just breathe. Enjoy the moment. Sit. Yeah. The and there's not going to end if the project's not in by five o'clock, you know? Exactly. The, the pressure that we put upon ourselves can be a mess, the, the squeeze, you know, and yes. also something about poverty and abundance. You know, if we have a story of poverty, that there's not enough, there's time poverty in particular. That's a big one for a lot of people, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. The clock is ticking, you know, it's yeah. fear of death, fear of not living a life fulfilled, you know, and satisfying. That's a huge one. Yeah. Yeah, and but I find slowing down, I actually managed to do a lot more and a lot more um, with a lot more skill and, um, yeah, to a higher standard. <laughs> Strangely. Isn't true? And, and isn't it true when, when you do nothing, things just seem to happen? I'm still amazed at it because I'm like, yeah, that needs to get done yesterday. <laughs> and when I just say, ah, for well, three days, I'm not doing anything. And then everything just happened. Everything yes. just flow. <laughs> I don't have to go work for it. I don't have to fight. I don't have to claw. I don't have yeah. to prove. It just happened. Yeah, and I think there's something about flow there, that shift between effort and effortless. Yeah. You know, that we've, we've fought for our survival. We have to keep pushing no pain, no gain. Mm -hmm. And that's not the whole story. That actually effortlessness 
enables so much to happen when we start to trust the universe that we're a part of, that it provides always, that we we can receive. You know, at first for, for me, there's something about it's very difficult if I'm push, push, plowing through, I'm actually not in receivership. Oh, you are. Awesome. <laughs> It's so difficult for so many of us, you know, we're, okay. we're... Can you expand a little bit more on that? Because a lot of people won't get it, and I did not get this until only a few years ago. Yeah. Well, I, I come back to the heart again. So many people I know, myself included, learned at a very young age to give, to give more than we have, to sacrifice, to be caring for others and service to others. It's like the scales are... Up tipped out of balance, but not be in service to ourselves. So we don't slow down and listen to, because the body is slow, it's got a slow clock. So to listen to what's going on inside of ourselves, to even receive a compliment perhaps, that might be very difficult for a lot of people to, yeah. So it's one-way traffic. And the heart is a circulatory organ. It, it, it needs to be nourished, it nourishes itself first before it goes to nourish the rest of the body. But most of us are stuck in just give, get rid of, one way, push. So learning to receive and come back into exchange and flow can feel very difficult. Mm -hmm. And most of us don't realize how out of sync we are with that. Beautiful. I love that, that is so, so powerful. Do you perhaps have a technique that you could share with people who struggle to receive? Um, I would suggest, so the hands are psychic and then they're the external expression of the heart. Yeah. So if it felt comfortable to place a curious or kind hand upon the heart, just to feel it beating and then just to take a moment to figure out which hand the heart prefers because it might not be your first choice. Just checking out. The heart will tell you. You'll just know immediately. There's something as simple as that. And then just noticing without any judgment. There's no story attached. Oh. can feel its beat and its rhythm. Oh. Something as simple as that. If we're so quick to attach stories to our experiences and we project a lot onto the body. Mm. So we'll have a thought that this means something. But actually, when we begin to listen to our bodies, there's, there's a very different wisdom oh. taking place. I love that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so I am a, a genie in a bottle and I've got the magic wand and I say, Caroline, you've got one wish that you can change the world. What would you do? One wish. <laughs> That everybody lies down to an inner dance all at the same time, all around the world. It's something about unity. Yes. Yeah. Explain that a little bit more because people don't, it's not everyone gets that. Yeah. So it's our nature to be in sync with each other. Like, you and I, as soon as we sat down together, within a minute or less than our hearts were starting to talk to each other, they were beginning to synchronize. So it was our breathing. So there's lots of systems taking place that have a divine order and there's through the chaos, they find sync. Mm -hmm. And there's something about we're also out of sync, not only with ourselves, with each other. We don't believe that we belong. We feel really disconnected. And so any any practice that gives us some opportunity to actually come home to ourselves and to each other and, and to go from dissonance into resonance where we're all vibrating at a similar frequency. Mm. You know, the language of the universe is vibration. 
I love that. And, and I felt that, I mean, I was in one of your classes and it was, uh, it was uncomfortable. At mm -hmm. one point it was really uncomfortable and I knew this is, like you said, this is something I need to sit with and I need to understand what is going on here because I was crawling. I was ready to, to, yeah. to get out and your voice was just continuous, just breathe, you know, just, just sit, just be with it and listen to the, the music. And it was, it was, it was profound, but it was profound. I, I saw so many visions. I saw such uh, beauty and reminded me of, of, you know, who I am and where I come from and what my purpose is and things I've been hiding from myself because I wasn't ready to be, to be judged. I wasn't ready for the world to, to sit in judgment because of, you know, um, I like being liked. I want to be liked. I want to belong. <laughs> so it's uncomfortable putting yourself out there and knowing that judgment's going to come and it's going to be uncomfortable. But yeah, thank you for that. That was really, really profound. I love that. I I agree. Yes. Uh, and I think along with that, I'm going to say everyone needs to get the acupuncture while they get the, the sound healing. <laughs> then it's like a dream come true. <laughs> Wow. Really powerful, isn't it? Yes. Maybe that could be a something for us. <laughs> so, Caroline, I would like to ask you just your last word of advice. Anything that you would like to share around, you know, being trauma informed. This is uh, still a relatively new concept, and especially from a somatic point of view. Why do you think it's important? And what do you think is the first step for someone to become? Um, trauma informed or especially from a somatic point of view yeah. and any other tools or resources you would like to share with the, the listeners okay again there's something about reclaiming our relationship with yourself it's first and foremost we, we actually need to go in before we, come, we can come back out and actually that that's maybe something what i discovered was that when i have an impulse to contract and get small can i give myself permission to do that by actually following the the direction that my body wants to take me hmm. and i work with a lot of people and we do this so it might be that i follow my head wants to go my mouth wants to go when i go inward and i go into a small and as tight as i yearn for and I stay there. And then what I discover is that my body has an innate way of bringing me back out. I don't have to make the decision to do it. Muscles will start to soften. And movement will start to, a bit like a flower sort of unfolding. And, burning. and I realize that all along, I knew how to go in and I knew how to come back out. And I think when we're working with trauma, we get stuck or we resist the, the the second part of the action or that the flow of that. Just like with our breathing, we, we tighten our breath, we don't breathe fully, we, we inhibit the ebb and the flow. So something that might, yeah, if, if you feel restriction or contraction, trust the intelligence of that and just discover more about that for yourself. If you're feeling expansive, be with that, but stay curious. There are so many resources and so many amazingly informed practitioners out there. You don't have to do it all on your own. You're never on your own. Some things you need to witness. Yes. And, yes. and there's no shame in that. In fact, that's the healing, yes. to have a loving and accurate witness. Mm -hmm. I love that. And would you like to just add one more part to trauma informed? Because a lot of people don't understand what it means. Um, and especially, as I said, from a somatic point of view. So, yeah. what is your understanding of what trauma informed is and why is it important for the general public? Because obviously, a lot of people say, oh, but I've never experienced trauma. I'll be like, well, let's, let's go back to. <laughs> well, trauma is. A human experience it's it's actually our world is in trauma climate change is an expression of that and we feel that in our bodies so we're not ever separate from what's taking place in Thank the you. people around us and in the world that we inhabit mm, so beautiful. trauma is it's relational mm. 
it's something we can learn about and discover of how it manifests in our own bodies and our own being. Mm. So to be trauma-informed is someone who's deeply curious and willing to discover for, for themselves what that means for them and also to have an understanding of how that might manifest in another person so that we can help them to return to a relationship with themselves. So that, you know, many, most of our habits, if not all of them, and our patterns and our programs are essentially the autonomic nervous system leading the show, running things, and we're essentially stuck in the past, reliving the same stories over and over. And it's really important to be able to know that because we become identified with that and we think that's who we are and that's all there is. And so to be able to support someone through an understanding of the body, to recognize from an observable distance what's happening for them. They can realize that they are not the story that they've been telling themselves. They're not the habits and patterns that they've been living. That was an adaptation. And they can reclaim agency and autonomy because all of a sudden now there's choice. Choice, so when there's an autonomic response, we can actually choose is that the one I'm needing right now? Is it the most helpful and appropriate? Or is there something else that I could do instead? So freedom, freedom choice, autonomy, that's what being trauma-informed is all about, supporting someone to rediscover their innate resources and to find freedom through that. Oh, I love it. That is powerful. Thank you so much. And how would we get hold of you? What's the best way to get hold of you? Probably through my website. So I have two websites. So okay. I might, I'm finding ways to bring them together. So there's Counseling with Caroline. It's one okay. website. And also um, Inner Dance Scotland. So I, I do a lot of online and group work around the country in Scotland. But yeah, I'm working with people around the world. And yeah. I do have a couple of recommendations, resources. I know I kind of Ooh, I do, yes. do love to talk. <laughs> No, please do she. <laughs> the first one is an app that you can download on your phone for free. It's, it's actually a friend who's an inner dance facilitator. Yep. He co-developed. It's an app called Be Light. Yeah, uh, yeah and essentially it's through, um, through the app you listen to sound and light flashes. So you have your eyes closed and it entrains the brain into different frequencies. And it's a very powerful self-healing tool. And it's one that actually is all about receiving because you don't need to do anything other than press play, lie down, get comfy, have your phone propped up or your screen and just receive. Wow. And it, I, I use it every morning. It's changed my world. So I, I, I encourage everyone to get that. Wow. Okay. There's a paid option and there's free as well. So it's up to you which feels right for you. But that's an amazing resource. And it's ancient ancient practice in with current technology. So it's a beautiful combination. Love that. Thank you. That's incredible. <laughs> I brought a couple of books. I've got millions of books. I love the vibration of books. And I keep books, even ones I haven't read for like 10 years. But there's Belonging by Toko Pa Turner. That she's a union analyst and she beautifully, soulfully describes belonging as a practice. Oh, no. And it's and she works with dreams, so that's my language. And also, at the moment, I'm reading Stealing Fire, which is about ecstasis and flow and how flow is being um, harnessed by, I suppose, the most successful organizations in the world to support that in the individuals and the teams. And that's very much what we're doing in Inner Dance, you know, really um, creating conditions for altered states of consciousness. You know, we don't require drugs to do that. We have the innate chemistry and through non-invasive sound, we can stimulate ourselves back into heightened states of awareness and healing. So those are two great things. That's incredible. Thank you. So I will obviously share it in the resource section. So all the links will be there to your websites. Uh, if there's any other social media uh, links that you will have to share there, uh, these books, I'll share it on uh, the, perhaps the Amazon link and the Be Light app. So yeah. that will all be available on the resource app, on the resource uh, section. Again, Caroline, 
you've been incredible. <laughs> I knew I knew you were going to be amazing, but I must admit you did exceed my expectations. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you. It's just really, it's just nice to spend some time in the same space as you. Yeah. Just so I'm, I'm always in awe and admiration of people living their dreams, and um, because we begin to radiate and just you're such a light shining. And so thank you. It's nice oh. to spend that time with oh. you. And I'm sorry if I didn't answer any of your questions. <laughs> I think it's been oh, a no. hard since I was a little girl. She never answers the question. <laughs> she answers what she wants to say. <laughs> this was way better. That's what I'm saying. This was incredible. <laughs>